So an alternate method for greatest common factor. So uh, you see this problem right here says uh, find the GCF of 15 and 75. That's what I read that as. GCF of 15 and 75. Okay, now what does GCF stand for? It stands for greatest common factor. Now remember, a factor is a number that can divide, a number that can divide. So if I'm looking for a greatest common factor, I'm looking for the biggest number that divides both of these. So I could divide them evenly with no remainder. The biggest number they're both divisible by is another way we put that. Now, we did this same exact problem in another video where I did it with the rainbow method, where we use the rainbow method to pull out all the factors so then we can just easily examine all the factors and decide which one's the largest. But some students hate the rainbow method um, because it just takes a lot of work. And so another, an alternate method you can do is we can take the two numbers that we're looking at, 15, and 75, and we can pull out every factor that they have in common and use the factors that they have in common to build the GCF. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to look for one factor at a time. Well, here's one thing I know. One thing I know. 15 and 75 have a 5 in common. So I'm going to go ahead and put this little bar here. And what I'm going to do is this is the number I'm pulling out. Both 15 and 75 are divisible by 5. And you might be saying, Kate, how do you know that? I know that because I know my divisibility tricks. I know that anything that ends in 0 or 5 is divisible by 5. If you don't know your divisibility tricks, you are going to have a lot of trouble on a problem like this. And so I would highly recommend you go watch those videos. But so I see a 5 in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide each of these numbers by 5. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. And 75 divided by 5, well, 5 goes into 7 once. Remainder 2. 5 goes into 25 5 times. That, by the way, was sight division. If you want to be able to divide in your head, go check out sight or short division. Same difference. It will make your life easy. Okay, so I pulled out the factor they have in common. Now I'm going to look and examine the numbers I have left. Don't look back. Don't look up here anymore. You're done with these two numbers. Look at these two numbers. Do they have anything in common? Well, here's something I know. Both 3 and 15 are on the 3 tens table, so they're both going to divide by 3. Okay. Now, I'll, again, I'll divide out the factor that I found. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 15 five times. Now let's examine these two numbers. Do 1 and 5 have any common factors? Well, the only thing that's going to divide 1 and 5 is 1. And we don't care about 1s. So let me just give a little note to self. Ignore the number 1 because it won't make anything smaller when you divide or bigger when you multiply. It's just a useless number. It won't matter in these problems. So what I basically found out was that the two numbers that were the two factors, prime factors, that GCF has in common are 5 and 3. They didn't have to be prime, but I found two numbers they have in common. And now, since I pulled them apart, these two numbers, by dividing, I will put them back together by multiplying. If you pull them apart by dividing, you put them back together by doing dividing's opposites, multiplying. And so the GCF here is 5 times 3, or 15. I love this method, especially when the numbers get big. It's way better than making a nasty rainbow with ugly numbers. So I'm going to go find another problem that we can look at. Okay, let's try another problem of finding the greatest common factor by removing one factor at a time. So the great news about this method is you don't need to... Uh, start with any particular number. It doesn't matter what you notice. Um, you can build that GCF in any order you want. So right away I notice that both these numbers are divisible by 5. I see the 5 on the butt end of this and the 0 on the butt end of that, which tell me they're both divisible by 5. Again, I'll divide the 5 out. I'll get rid of the thing I found. So 5 goes into 45 9 times, and for this I'll use site division. 5 goes into 60. Let's see, it goes into 6 once remainder 1, and it goes into 10 twice. So I'm left with the numbers 9 and 12. Do 9 and 12 have anything in common? Well, they sure do. They've got a 3 in common, don't they? I'll divide them both by 3. They're both divisible by 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Now, do 3 and 4 have every com any common factors? Uh, no way. They're only one number apart. Do you see that? 
make a little note to yourself. If two numbers are only one digit apart or one number apart, there's no way they're going to be on the two times tables together or the three times tables together or the four times tables together uh, because the only number, the only times tables that goes one apart is the one times tables. And so I am done. So once again, in order to build my GCF, I will take all the factors that I found. And since I divided to pull them out, I will multiply them, put them back together. And I just learned that the GCF of 45 and 60 is 15. This problem is the perfect example of why alternate methods will help you. I am telling you, if you sat there and made a rainbow with 72 and 180, you would be doing it all day. Also, for those of you ninjas, I know who you are, who just look at two numbers and see the GCF, you usually get this problem wrong. You pick a common factor, but not the greatest common factor. It is important uh, that we go straight to the greatest common factor. So you are going to love this method of pulling out one factor at a time. So let's go ahead and uh, give it a try. I've got the number 72 and I've got 180. And I'm going to pull out anything they have in common, like literally anything. So I don't care what you notice. Here's something I notice. They're both even numbers. Can you see that? Well, in our divisibility tricks, we learned that all even numbers are divisible by two. So let's pull out that two they have in common. Now, if you notice something bigger, more power to you. The bigger the number you pull out, the less work you'll have to do. Uh, but I just noticed the two. So two goes into seven three times, remainder one. Two goes into 12 six times. Uh, two goes into 18 nine times. Two goes into zero zero times. So here I'm left with two numbers again. Do they have anything in common? Well, now you might notice that these are both numbers on the nine times tables. If you know your nine times tables, you have, oh, hey, 36 is on there, 90 is on there. So if you want, we can go straight to nine, okay? Again, you can pull out any number you notice they have in common. It doesn't matter, and that's why I like this method. Well, nine goes into 36 four times, and nine goes into 90 10 times. Now keep examining those numbers till you're sure they have nothing left in common. Take a look at four and 10. Do they have anything in common? Well. I'll tell you one thing, they're still both even. And as we learned when we did our divisibility tricks, all even numbers are divisible by two. Let's divide out that two they have in common. Two goes into four twice, and two goes into 10 five times. Now take a look at the numbers two and five. Do they have anything in common? They do not. You know what's one way I can tell? They're both prime. You know how I keep begging you guys to memorize your first five prime numbers, two, three, five, seven, and 11? Here's one of the reasons why. But if two numbers are both prime, they're not going to have any factors in common besides one. And so I know that I'm done. Okay, so here's all my work. How am I going to put my answer back together? I took all these factors apart, but now I need to put them back together through multiplication. So my GCF is going to be 2 times 9 times 2, or 18 times 2 is 36. So the GCF of 72 and 180 is 36.